the young age of 29, Earl Sweatshirt is already a legend. Over the last decade and a half, he has built a catalog of music that most artists would be lucky to accumulate in a lifetime. He has been one of the figureheads for two separate movements that went on to change the sound and landscape of modern hip-hop, through the abstract introspection of his words to the wave-defining sound of his beats. No other artist of his generation has done more to lead the new age of hip-hop into its current state than him. Earl Sweatshirt was born in Chicago, but moved to California at an early age. His mom was a law professor, and his dad was a poet and political activist. Earl was destined from a young age to be a thinker. When he would get into trouble as a kid, his parents would make him write an essay about what he's done. And now he's known as one of the most important writers in hip-hop because of it. He started rapping in 7th grade under the name Sly Tendencies. He released the mixtape Kitchen Cutlery before he even turned 15 years old. On this tape, Sly showcases a lyrical skill set well beyond his years. Clearly inspired by MF Doom, he displays some incredibly intricate wordplay and rhyme schemes. Around the same time, he formed the group The Backpackers with his friends Luffy and JW Miho, and they released their only project together in 2009, called World Playground. His early work as Sly Tendencies caught the ear of Tyler the Creator, who was putting together a group called Odd Future, and Thebe soon would change his name to Earl Sweatshirt and become a member of the group. In March of 2010, he released the mixtape Earl at the age of 16. This was his first official declaration that Earl Sweatshirt was a voice of the future of hip-hop. He expanded on the intricate wordplay of his first mixtape while adding a touch of the macabre. There was a darkness within his words on this project that gave him a maturity level way beyond his peers. He raps as Earl Sweatshirt almost as a fictional character, committing crimes and living a life of debauchery. To teenage rap fans all over the world, this was exactly the voice that they needed to hear. An MC with the mind state of their peers, but the skill set of a legend. His words became an outlet for the youth of hip hop's next generation. At the young age of 16, Earl was already getting called a hip hop prodigy, but he wasn't even able to reap the rewards of his success just yet. Around this time, his mother sent him to Samoa, to the Coral Reef Academy, a therapeutic retreat school for at risk boys because he had been getting into trouble. Attending the academy made him absent from much of this era of Odd Future's music, so the group and their fans started up the Free Earl movement, helping to build his popularity while they awaited his return. While in Samoa he did a lot of reading, most notably the biography of Malcolm X, and he wrote a lot as well, even penning his iconic verse on the Odd Future posse cut, Oldie. He returned home with the help of Layla Steinberg, who was known at the time for being the first manager of Tupac Shakur, and she has been Earl's manager ever since. 2012 was Earl's grand return to America, and really his coming out party as an artist. He was only 18 years old, and he was one of the most exciting young artists in hip-hop. At this time, there was a new wave of artists pushing hip-hop into its next generation. Earl and his Odd Future comrades were joining Black Hippie out west, as well as the Beast Coast Movement and ASAP Mob out east. This time was a changing of the guard for hip-hop bringing back a focus on innovation and lyricism, helping the old heads regain their faith in the future, and giving the next generation of rap fans a movement to call their own. Odd Future was the voice of the youth. Their music and personalities channeled the feeling of youth angst and experimentation. They even had a classic Adult Swim TV show called Loiter Squad, giving their fans a chance to see every aspect of their creativity and voices. Earl was pretty much the younger brother of the group, and while he was making a name for himself with his feature verses, mixtapes, and personality on the show, he was only just getting started. In August of 2013, Earl Sweatshirt released his debut album Doris. The album felt as big as a debut album should, with production from the Neptunes, RZA, Tyler the Creator, and Bad Bad Not Good. Earl also handled a lot of the production on here himself, under the alias Random Black Dude. Earl handling much more of the production allowed the album to feel much more personal to him, with him blending the emotional introspection that he'd go on to master into his lyrics. Earl is responsible for introducing a new generation to abstract lyricism, with unique wordplay and a passion for poetic imagery. Doris announced Earl Sweatshirt as one of the most important rappers of his generation, and he would only top that going forward. His second album was announced to be called Gnosis, but he ultimately decided to change its title to I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside. This ended up being the perfect name for the album. Its lengthy title made the album instantly iconic, and the project's darker subject matter was reflected perfectly. On this album, Earl Sweatshirt, the writer, takes full form, channeling his distressed emotional state into a record that breathes with him. Every track on here but one was produced by Earl. The production on this album sits with the mellowness of solitude, 
and the project sounds like an idle mind sitting with his self and spiraling deeper and deeper into his own thoughts. Earl Sweatshirt is like a painter with his words, with every line made from beautiful strokes that add up to a surrealist self-portrait. On this album he deals with his struggles with addiction, anxiety, and depression, and the album has become a signature favorite for many young fans going through similar issues. Odd Future is one of the most important rap groups of the past 15 years. They introduced a new generation to new sounds of hip hop and humanity. There was no inciting incident that broke the group up, but they did slowly drift apart over the next few years, which gave Earl a chance to rediscover himself as a solo artist. Earl spent the next few years away from the mainstream spotlight, finding inspiration and experimenting with his sound to discover who Earl Sweatshirt would be in his 20s. In 2015, he released the EP, Solace. He released the EP on YouTube with the description, music from when I hit rock bottom and found something. He dedicated it to his mother, and it's grown to become one of the most intriguing projects of his career. It's only 10 minutes long, but its subject matter ranges from addiction to insomnia, and the production is a low fidelity jazz hop into the depths of depression. Around this time, Earl became introduced to the collective Slums out of New York. Led by Mike, this group was mixing lo-fi sample heavy production with an introspective poetic pen. They were influenced by Earl coming up, but now that they were doing their own thing, they would be the ones influencing him. From here on out, Earl Sweatshirt delved into underground hip-hop, perfecting the slum sound and becoming the de facto leader of this sonic movement. In 2017, he produced the entirety of Makami's Dia de los Muertos, making him one of the first widely known artists to hop on the Dump God train, while also giving us an underground classic in the process. Earl Sweatshirt's next album was 2018's Some Rap Songs, which is the crowning achievement of his career. Dedicated and themed around his father's recent passing, this album is an impressionistic look at life through the music he's able to make. The album is fragmented, like clips of memories cycling through a mournful mind. The samples are chopped up from songs that reminded him of his father, and his words are the stream of conscious poetic ramblings of a man trying to piece it all together. This is one of my favorite albums of all time, and a definitive landmark of modern hip hop. There was a few years between I Don't Like Shit, I Don't Go Outside, and some rap songs releasing. So this is an album that defined Earl Sweatshirt's legacy, graduating past the teen rap star persona and into a bona fide hip hop legend, with multiple great eras of his career to back it up. The release of this album paved the way for artists like Mike and Navy Blue to step onto the scene as two of the most exciting young artists working today, and Earl was seen as the figurehead of this movement. He released the Feet of Clay EP in 2019 further expanding on the feel and direction of some rap songs. Ironically, the song East became the most known song on the album, as it became memefied because of its off-kilter sound. The song itself may not be your cup of tea, but it represents something so great about Earl Sweatshirt as an artist. He never has been a slave to the beat like most MCs are, always finding his own flow and doing his own thing on a song even if it's not conventional, and East embodies that feeling. Earl Sweatshirt the artist has feet of clay, able to mold and adapt to any terrain that may come his way. In 2022, Earl released his next solo album, Sick. It already feels like this is becoming an underappreciated piece of his discography. The album continues his musical evolution. His lyrics are more focused than ever, with an added maturity to his writing, coming to terms with his new role as a father, and his production takes a step into the future. Earl Sweatshirt's production throughout most of his career feels very nostalgic, with aged lo-fi fuzz to the old sampled sound waves. And while Six still has that, it also embraces a more modern approach. This one wasn't produced entirely by Earl, as it has production from Theravada, The Alchemist, Sam I Am, Navy Blue, Black Noise, and more, so it's a little more varied than the usual Earl Sweatshirt project. The album's lead single 2010 has drill-inspired production, showcasing Earl's versatility and nodding to the reality that Earl is not locked into any sound, and he could have many musical evolutions to come in the future. The Alchemist has been a frequent collaborator of Earl for much of his career, and there has long been rumors of the duo teaming up for a full album. They even teased a few years back that they already secretly released an album on YouTube under a fake name. No one was ever able to find it if it did exist, but they did finally end up releasing Voir Dear in 2023. 
This was one of the most anticipated albums of last year, and it did not disappoint. Voir dire means speak the truth in French, and that is exactly what this album is about, speaking the truth. This is one of the purest incarnations of true hip hop that we've gotten in years. This album came out 10 years after Doris, and Earl sounds so much more fulfilled and purposeful, while still maintaining an aura of mystery around him. He started off as a hip hop prodigy, and has somehow gotten better each and every year. He is turning 30 years old the week that I dropped this video, and he's already lived a full career, ready to start another one in his 30s. There is no telling where Earl Sweatshirt will go as an artist going forward, but what I do know is that wherever his next stop is, he has an entire generation of rap fans behind him, ready to be led into the next evolution of hip hop. Thanks for watching, everybody. Earl Sweatshirt is a modern day legend, so I hope I did him justice with this video. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite Earl Sweatshirt song. Also, let me know what other artists should I cover this year with a full video. If you want the chance to vote on future video topics, check out patreon.com slash defgoldbloom, where my patrons are able to vote on one video topic each and every month. If you're a fan of underground hip-hop, make sure to check out Def Magazine at staydef.com. And as always, I got a lot more headed your way, so stay tuned, stay safe, and stay deaf. Thanks for watching.